Hello everyone and welcome back to Solar System Tourism in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul. This is a return vessel for our mission around Mercury. That's Mercury there, not the moon. And so this is making a series of burns around Mercury in order to rendezvous with Arthur E. King and Katak, uh, who are around Mercury and awaiting a ride back. Basically, this is going to push their vessel back home. It's, uh, it's a stage that will dock with them. And the thing is, it's got ion engines, so it takes a while to do a rendezvous because, after all, you can't do the burns continuously. You have to do them in small, discrete chunks and make sure that when you finally get an encounter like this, that you have enough time to do the final rendezvous burn and burn off the relative velocity. And so that's what we are doing here. But yeah, the ion engines do make that a little bit difficult, even when we have a nuke attached to them, a nuclear reactor, powering them. Uh, anyway, but we managed it, and it parked away from the assembly that we have, which is causing incredible lag, by the way. Uh, I have no idea. It can't be just the parts. It must be some modules on some of this, these parts causing some weird error or something. I check. I check the console to see if there's any redness. Uh, there does not seem to be null refs or something. There's some error there, but I don't think that was related to something in particular. Anyway, we separated off uh, Katak and Arthur E. King, and they're in the... It's a Gemini capsule plus the big Gemini passenger compartment. That's as much space as I gave them. And so this is the pusher stage that will push the their accommodations back to Earth. And then they have to capture around Earth. But, well, whether this is enough or not is something to be seen. So here I'm gingerly docking them. We were using the really small docking ports because that's all that can fit on top of the Gemini capsule. And then I plot using Transfer Window Planner to try and figure out what the ejection and insertion delta V are. Ejection's no problem. We have enough delta V for that. Uh, well, I say no problem, but that we still have the thing where we're ion engines and so it takes a lot of time to do a burn that's 6,000, 7,000 meters per second. So that's bad. And then there's the whole business of capturing around there. So here I manually plotted a 6,570 meter per second burn to Earth and then that to figure out how much it would take to capture around Earth and it's a lot. So it doesn't look like we have enough delta V here. However, I, I leave that as an option for now and we turn to other things. So we didn't do the burn at Mercury. We are now focused on Mars and at Mars, your pops wanted to land on Mars, paid for it with struts as our tourists do. And the problem is this Mars lander gave me zero confidence, especially since one of the engines blew up and we don't have the inflatable heat shield anymore and other things are going to go wrong, just just saying. Uh, so I had saved right there before we decoupled. I had uh, made a, a save and we will need it. We will need it. So here we go, just adjusting our periapsis into the atmosphere of Mars. And this is now approaching Mars and encountering its atmosphere. And I decided to light the engines, but I forgot I had lost one during the initial air, uh, entry capture. And yeah, we have to shut that one down for it to be balanced. So that tossed us around a little bit, but fortunately we're still high enough in the atmosphere that it didn't matter too much. It took a little bit of time for the RCS to get a handle on things, but it did. But that was not the end of our problems. We're continuously using these engines to slow down in order to prevent overheating. And uh, that should have worked, but as you can see, there are tanks overheating above the tanks that are supplying the propellant for the burn. These are tanks directly attached to the orange, and I guess the orange, which is that main orangish tank, which is normally used as a sky crane-ish sort of thing, uh, those little procedural tanks that are attached to the orange are getting way more heat than the procedural tanks that aren't attached to the orange, suggesting the orange is conducting a whole lot of heat to them, which it shouldn't. But that's down to me. I need to be able to configure the parts properly. And so those tanks blew up, and those are supposed to be part of the ascent stage, 
well, the a little bit for descent and then mostly ascent. And so we really don't have enough propellant to get back into orbit like this. So that is an issue, but I continue on. You will have noticed by the explosions that we do not have the original audio and that's because the original video capture got glitched it uh it was unreadable so that file these files when i record the live streams are like 20 gigabytes in it just had some sort of issue and well i had to download the version off of twitch which had all the audio in one track and that includes me talking so i couldn't use that anyway so we don't have the original audio including the explosion sounds which is a shame because we're going to get a bunch of explosion sounds in this episode. So anyway, and for those who weren't aware, this is all done during live streams. And we're going to smack really hard into the surface because the parachutes were too slow to deploy. And... E takes a while for the game to decide exactly how to explode it and there it goes all right all right havoc all sorts of havoc but but as it turns out everything explodes but the cabin <laughs> so uh your pops uh technically landed on mars but not in a situation where we wanted your pops to be. I mean, eventually uh, your pops is going to perish from lack of food, water, and oxygen like this. But that's why I had made that quick save. So it was time to restore it, of course. <laughs> we're going to go back. Now, this is a completely sandbox save, and we're not even doing comms in this save. And basically the rules are whatever I say it is because we're just having fun. So um, I, I, I think I might have consulted my live stream chat on this, whether we could revert or not. Uh, but we ultimately reverted one way or another. And I decided to try again based on the information that we had on that attempt. And the goal here was to do a light error breaking pass through the atmosphere of Mars first in order to avoid having the tanks attached to the orange explode. So we were aimed fairly high in the atmosphere instead of uh, at an altitude that would get us uh, a landing, but still the, the little tanks exploded in the atmosphere. And honestly, this pass through the atmosphere didn't actually slow us down very much. So a lighter aero braking pass through the atmosphere wouldn't have helped. It wouldn't have slowed us down anything at all. In fact, uh, on this pass as it was, I decided that we would need to use the propellant and slow down, as you can see, because we still ended up way too high. Uh, so not much drag was imposed on the vessel. The tanks just exploded anyway. So what what's up with that, I wonder? It's, uh, it's a curious situation. Anyway, so those were lost, and we try and land again, this time a little bit more safely hopefully uh, at least the parachutes should work out I've got the landing legs out there because uh, they weren't uh, action group to the gear action group so we've got the parachutes out a little bit earlier and the main chutes and jettisoning that stage successfully amazingly enough and using the orange and its engines in order to do the final descent burn that's what we've got here but you can see from the delta v normally i would like way more than 4,000 meters per second in order to get into orbit around mars it's not unlike kerbin in some respects it's just got less gravity and less atmosphere but its bulk makes up for that but here we touch down and yep well at least we are upright and nothing exploded this time but we do not appear to have enough delta V to get back into orbit at this point. But your pops got to plant a flag. I don't know at what point we consider this contract fulfilled, but uh, I, I didn't want to really kill my tourist in this case. It's not technically in the contract that I have to keep them alive, mind you. So, yeah. But I, I, I wanted to try and keep my tourists alive. So here we are trying to get your props back into the pod and that proved more difficult than I expected. 
uh, the EVA pack, even in Mars gravity, which is one third of Earth's, was not strong enough. I tried retracting the landing gear, that wasn't good enough. I got permission from chat to hack grab. <laughs> so that, that, I'm pretty sure I had to ask chat for permission to do that. So yeah, we did that. Sorry about that. Cheats happened. So then your pops got to get back into the pod. Well, okay, there's a little bit of discontinuity between the ladder and the hatch ladder, if you will. And that did not, that was not a good thing. So we just rocketed up to the top of it and then climbed back down. These are the things that happen in Kerbal. Okay, grab and board, please. Give me board now. Climb a little bit. I really need to slide that down a little bit more board. All right, with fuzzy there. Okay, now I did un I reset that unhack gravity. But uh, for for reasons I don't recall, it seemed like that did not actually work out for me. But anyway, first of all, we dump resources in order to get more delta V. And maybe maybe I tried to hack gravity to get uh, the Kerbal to the top here, and that's what happened. But anyway, we are dismantling parts. We're trying to do the whole Martian thing where we strip off as much as possible so we can get back to orbit. It's something that happens a lot on Mars, apparently. Uh, this is not the first time I've had to do this myself. Anyway, so, all right, time to go. And RCS on and go. But for some reason, we went like sideways. I don't know why, actually. I don't know what, what went wrong here. Exactly. But it sure went wrong in a hurry. Now, if you notice, we did seem to have a fair amount of Delta V, 4,000, more than 4,000 or so, which might have been able to get us back into orbit. But yeah, I, I think maybe when I was trying to climb to... Uh, destroy some of those parts. I had hacked gravity again, and gravity had stayed hacked in that case. Okay, well, we're, uh, we're, I guess we still have our engine. We have less fuel, though, and this is still sliding. So not the best of situations. Ultimately, we stopped, and I tried again, but now we've lost some of our Delta V. Still uh, seem to have more than 4,000. But we are not going like straight at all or in the direction that I really want to. We were trying to rendezvous with something in particular, but that's not going to work out very well. Your Pops is not thrilled with the situation either. And it, it ends up flopping around. Maybe there's a lot of aerodynamic drag and our aerodynamics is not particularly good. But, you know, boy, Mars's 1% atmosphere sure is just enough to make life miserable for us. <laughs> Eventually we turn prograde, but yeah, we definitely do not have enough Delta V now. And as we run out there, but just to check, I have your pops pop out and try and use the EVA propellant in order to get to orbit, but we are way off, really. And so, ultimately, this attempt does not work. Not that your pops would have enough food, water, and oxygen to rendezvous with anything anyway. And so once that has been determined, we restore to save again. So, yep. Uh, that, that was the resulting orbit for your pops after trying to use the EVA propellant. Clearly not enough. And we proceed with easily the cheatiest and most quick savey episode of solar system tourism ever uh, by restoring your pops to the station where I had set that quick save. So that lander is still there, but it doesn't seem to be useful. Next up, I decided to send an ISRU scanner to the moon. I repurposed the Mercury probe for that. 
That Mercury probe did not work out for us, so it didn't end up scanning Mercury for, uh, for resources, specifically ore, actually. The ISR unit is configured to turn ore into liquid hydrogen, liquid oxygen, and or liquid methane. So here I am launching this lunar probe with a rocket that has two Prometheus engines at the bottom. These are 1,000 kilonewton methane oxygen engines that uh, Ariane Space is trying to develop or has developed, is working on. And after that, the next stage is an RD-58 uh, tuned to the version that was on Varan, so Sintin and liquid oxygen. And so that is this stage. This has five ignitions, I believe. Oh, no, I think the Buran version has more than that. But we are using it for completing orbit and transferring to the moon. And then using an AJ-10 on the probe itself to finish the transfer to the moon and capture into lunar orbit. However, I forgot that while we're not using comms in this save, the resource scanner requires comms anyway. We're not doing, it is a sandbox, so we're not doing science. We don't have comms enabled, but the resource scanner still requires comms. So I forgot the comm dish and had to put that on. And so we sent another one. So same deal, all the burns the same, except now we have about two comm dishes. Oh, I say all the burns the same, but we had to make a little correction here that was sort of scenic, so I decided to keep it in. So a little correction burn there. Uh, I think mainly to make sure that our approach to the moon was polar, otherwise we can't do the scanning. And with this polar approach, we capture into orbit with the AJ-10, and that is good enough. So we upload the data. That takes a long time, actually. <laughs> It takes a while, but we get our ore data, and that's what it looks like. Not that much ore on the moon, but there is one patch that was enticing. Uh, there's that bit there, and then the southern one is even better concentration. So I'm mainly interested in that one. So it is time to develop an ISRU lander. We want to get have ore tanks, we have to have fuel tanks, we have to have the whole business. And actually later on I decided to turn this, I, I liked it so much that I decided to turn this ISRU lander into a single part using Blender. Uh, so I made a customish part. I don't know if I made a video about that. Probably. Um, probably there's a video about that ISRU lander. But here we are testing it on the runway using HackGrav to make sure it's balanced because it's going to be landing like this and we need to make sure it's can handle properly. But there's a catch. These are vacuum engines, and this is, you can't, you can hack gravity, but you can't get rid of the atmosphere. So you have to uh, hack gravity to less than lunar gravity in order to get it to lift off because we're only getting the sea level ISP and thrust out of these engines. These are BE7s, and we have to compensate for that because this is in the atmosphere now. But anyway, it handles pretty well, actually, like, especially since it has to fight against the atmosphere and there's still, you know, drag and center of lift, center of mass issues. But yeah, it does pretty well considering all of that. And the fact that I didn't really design it to handle atmosphere at all. And of course, with Katniss Cape Canaveral, anything that isn't a facility is water, even if it looks like land. So I was trying to make a nice landing there, but we ended up splashing down instead. So I decided to launch it on an ultimate collaborative SLS. That's an SLS with Raptor 9 boosters, uh, little shuttle mice that I sort of, in, in the canon, if you will, uh, is, are made by Sierra Nevada Corporation. And the upper stage is a, the upper stage on the New Glen, so by Blue Origin. So off it goes, and I present this view of it going through the clouds. I think it was sunset at this point, which means we're heading into the nighttime side, unfortunately. But yeah, that presented us with a nice glow on the clouds as we rose through them. And so I felt that this was a nice shot with the ultimate collaborative SLS. A little bit choppy though, 
uh, lag is what it is. There's a lot of missions being run in this save, and so that alone creates a lot of lag. I forgot to action group the engines on the Raptor 9 boosters, so I had to use the fuel shutoff method to reserve fuel for their potential return. Of course, we're not following them down. And then the shuttle mice, unfortunately, did not get this close. To, I mean, it's reasonably close to orbit, but probably not what I would consider safe return velocities for the shuttle mice. Let me put it that way. So I would like to get them closer to orbit if I was going to pilot them down. Not that that's been particularly successful. Really, I should just slap parachutes on those things. Anyway, so I don't know why I had to do this 1,000 meter per second burn here. I don't remember. It's been a long time since uh, this actual stream happened, so not all of the details are present in my mind anymore. But anyway, we manage it. This is the capture burn around the moon. And then we need to deploy the lander. Uh, unfortunately, I guess we ran out of RCS on the stage itself. So the RCS on the lander was having trouble stabilizing the hold on thing. We have to basically fling off from it. And so here it is. And now at least having separated, it can get control over itself. I retracted the radiators prior to decoupling because I figured that there was a chance that they might be damaged by that. And here we are plotting for our landing. So we did get control and everything's all right now. Let's see if we can drill for ore on the moon, which will of course be very valuable for a lunar base. I kept the purple glow of the ore location enabled and that actually glowed on the tanks which was interesting and here we are landing with the two BE7s fairly effective plenty of Delta V more Delta V than we needed but of course we sized the tanks mainly to be able to store fuel for other things to pick up and I primarily wanted to use simple logistics for this to transfer the fuel that'll make it much easier so I start drilling for ore that's successful uh, and we start trying to convert to hydrogen and oxygen, which is what the B7s use and what these tanks have. But I noticed that the hydrogen was not replenishing, and that's because the rate of boil off was faster than the rate that we could turn the ore into hydrogen. So I realized that that would need to be fixed. And so giving it some time, that uh, ended up being the case. And the oxygen seemed to be able to replenish, but the hydrogen rate was not sufficient. So in the wake of this finding, of course, I edited the configurations to make sure that things would work out. But still, it's a sort of tedious thing to get the ISRU done on the moon. Anyway, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.